about let's start let's start about um Ömer Yurtseven, for instance you know him very well because uh, he was a Fenerbahçe guy um and you you just witnessed and helped him to to de- develop as a player were you surprised that Ömer Yurtseven was that successful uh from my perspective um seeing him over here and spending some time with him uh i uh, after i understand how he looks to basketball his targets his life his proficiency uh i was convinced convinced from the beginning that he's going to be in a great position and i told him in his face the time period that he was getting zero minutes he was working extra and extra you know it's not easy in nba like every 36 hours 24 hours 48 hours you play game Uh, you are you are in the roster you don't get minutes but still you want to go out and do an extra workout again and again and every day you don't play but you try to get ready it's not easy but he was doing that and i literally told him that keep going in this way opportunity is going to come either covid or injuries and you need to be ready for that moment and all of a sudden all these things happens and the opportunity was there and he was ready for that moment that's why he deserve all the credits that he took right now because he earned himself i'm witness of it so i proud of him because of his dedication about his targets his focus and his hard work i hope he goes in the same way do not relax and gets better and better and he's going to be very important piece for for many high level teams this is Uh, what i see for alperen is a little bit different picture because alperen came over here uh, again this is the point that i will talk for some of the players it's very important the the atmosphere that you are in so that atmosphere in that team right now the chemistry the group of the guys are are actually good for him because there is room for him to improve to take time to show himself if he was in a good roster uh who is competing for the high level in nba right now he wouldn't get that much of credit and opportunity he got that opportunity and he is using very well now i told him so i'm telling you right now uh, that he needs to keep working hard he's working very hard he needs to keep working hard and he needs to learn english i told him many times before also because he needs to express himself he needs to uh touch his teammates he needs to talk he needs to uh, he, need, he need to be able to explain his needs uh, to his coaches and and also teammates even think about talking to referee you need that and adapt over here and secondly is uh, work ethic is great Uh, and Alperen needs to keep that at high high level to get in another uh, another level as a player. Um, what's the ceiling? Do you think? I mean, um, people made some exaggerated, but also um, very 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 proudful comparisons with I don't know Yao Ming and Hakeem Olajuwon. We don't expect anything like that. Uh, I think Alperen's improvement was pretty fast. Um, even better than expected i guess with the, with the shooting with the footwork with the assisting skills um he was in the conversation of um rookie of the year uh, for instance the, again let's not put too much pressure on him but uh, i think his ceiling is very much higher than many people expected no ceiling is higher that's for sure but to 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 reach that goal you need to keep work uh, working hard crazy this the here the level is so high the the names that you already gave are really high level players spend many years over here he has that potential but he needs to work very very hard stay dedicated do not relax once the people start to know you the teams to pay attention more to focus on you more you need to be able to give the same performance so in order to do that you need to know that on next level they will defend you harder they will focus on you more so you need to get stronger you need to be able to 
read better. I talk to him all these details, so I can say that. So uh, that's that's why you need to prepare yourself for the next challenge instead of getting hyped by people's words. Words are words. And these words today celebrates you as a great potential kid, but tomorrow, once you don't prove that on the court, nobody will remember this. So it's too early to talk about that, but that potential is there, that's, that's obvious. But it's gonna come with extra work and prepare yourself, dedication, sacrifice, not just celebrating. Um, Jedi Osman, last night uh, he played, uh, he missed some shots, but generally this season Jedi was pretty good, pretty um, instrumental. Uh, I think he found a good place in JB Bickerstaff's um, scheme, overall plan. Uh, what What are your impressions of him this season? I think JD JD also understood his position in the team, and he's different. He, he's different. He's in different spot than the beginning of the season. He's really. Uh, if you go back to previous game that they played against Sacramento, for example, he played 31 minutes. And he was very effective. The whole end and game was tie game. And whole last quarter, he was one of the most important piece offensive structure uh, on that game. And many other games, he's in that way. So he's so smart. He's doing some of the things really good. So he's very important piece for the team, defensive-wise, running the floor. And offensively, knows his spot and when to shoot the ball. He's a great shooter. This year, his shooting percentage is, is also up and good. So I think he, he found his role in the team. They have a pretty good team. Uh, I think they will they will compete in playoffs and they will be uh, competitive whole season. And and I really like watching him on the court because he's, he's now ex- one of the experienced NBA players who is an important piece in his team. Solid piece. Furkan Korkmaz having some ups and downs uh, throughout the season. He started the season very well. Then he uh, got an illness, not uh, COVID-19 uh, related, not related with COVID-19 illness. Then he uh, came back with a, with a double-double and a career high. Um, when you talk to him from time to time, what do you think, What what is behind this, you know, falls and ups and downs? For the whole season. I think the main thing, uh, ups and downs about Furkan is is really related with the roster's ups and downs. Because if you check the Philly games, the roster's beginning of the season was, they were going like a full roster. And then they had issues, injuries, not just Embiid. Many of their players got injured. And it's not easy in the roster, you miss lots of players. And as a role player, to give the same performance is not easy. So uh, I understand Furkan's situation. Furkan is still the same Furkan, and he's working very hard. I know that. But it's not easy if you are missing the main pieces around to create the same winning atmosphere or, or the, the, the good basketball you, you played. Keep doing that is not easy. So we need to understand him that uh, his team had ups and downs roster-wise, and it's, it affects the player uh, performance, of course, if you are missing the main players all season long. Um, everything was going well for your touches in the beginning of the season. Um, offensive efficiency, historic. it was very fluid, very good, very high offensive ratings. Um, a very high volume of three-point shooting, Um, defense, not that good, but it was still okay. So you jumped uh, the, to, to the top of the Western Conference standing. Then something happened. Um, Rudy Gobert, uh, of course, had to go to the protocol, and then he got injured uh, from his shoulder. And now um, there's a there's a losing series of four games in succession. Um, so one thinks, is the team, people talk about this like this, Is that team is over dependent on Rudy Gobert's presence in defense and offense at the same time? First of all, we need to understand the. To me, we need to understand the 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 picture of the teams. Because if you go 
and search all the team teams in NBA, you will find the main players in the organization who are carrying some part of the offensive or defensive structure. So um, from that standpoint, Rudy Gobert is one of the very important piece of this team, obviously, defensive-wise. This is why if you, if, if, <laughs> if you have three times defensive player of the year player last four years, uh, nobody can refuse saying that he is the most important, one of the most important piece of the team defensively and plus offensively because he's, he is a big man, seven-footer, who is able to run the floor vertically. And because he runs and puts pressure on the rim, he creates many other options for the rest of the team. So that's offensively and defensively a very important piece of the team. That's, that's fact. Um, but, also, but also we missed many players in this time period in the same moment, like because of the COVID protocol. So Rudy Gobert yesterday, Hassan Whiteside was out, and then Joe Inves was out. So it's not easy for any team to lose the main players in the rotation and then talk about uh, we are losing because of this or because of that. That, that starts to become a combination of many things. Uh, offensively and defensively. So that's obvious. Missing Rudy Gobert is one of the biggest pieces because three times defensive player of the rim, great rim protector, uh, great feeling about basketball defensively and offensively is able to run uh, and to do many things and, and create position for the other players just because he's moving on the court. So that's, uh, that's obvious. On the other hand, yes, we start as... I think we are still the best offensive rating team uh, in the league. That's one of the things that Coach Quinn Snyder is big on that. He is very focused and very detailed about offensive structure. So whatever this team is doing, doing with purpose. And that really impresses me and affects my, my um, point, uh, how I look to offensive basketball. It really affected me personally also. So uh, I think once this COVID issue is gone, we will be able to be back again offensively and defensively.